Some of you will know we have been talking a lot over the last year or so about what membership of the King's Church might be. And we've actually changed somewhat the way we look at membership. We felt this is going to be a great improvement uh, to help us to link up with people in the area and to get more people involved and, uh, and a user-friendly way of coming to church. And so we've called this the Ragged Church Model. I'll get to that. But basically, what I would like to just do is, in a few minutes, explain about membership in the church. I'll start at the big step. Now, if you can move away, I can move away, can't I? <laughs> No, we've gone too far. It's a button, you need to point it at the computer. Oh, the computer. There we go. That's one of the problems I find with these things. You don't know how many times you have to press and so on. But basically, what I've tried to do here is to show the church as a whole. What does it mean? Because to many of us, church means a building with a spire or, or something like that. But church is actually people. And so here we've put down two aspects of the global church. First of all, there's the universal church, the, um, the invisible church. Some part of it is in heaven. It's called the church addressed up in heaven. There's a church militant, not a very um, popular kind of word to use today. But the church on earth it is to fight for the cause of the kingdom. And we are here as part of that. So there's a church militant on earth. Nobody knows exactly who is in it or outside it. Because we are told in Revelation 20 that uh, in that last time when Jesus comes back, the Lamb's book of life will be opened. And those who are listed there will be in heaven forever. And we don't know who's there. Some people can pretend. Some people can start and end badly. I don't know what. But God alone knows who are the true, genuine, born-again children of God. But basically, it's between us and God whether we are part of that universal church. But then you've also got that um, ellipse there, that flattened circle, where you can see the church on earth. And anybody who thinks they are a Christian would be within that and are linked with a church. But many of them may be pretending. There are many people outside, you can see down at the bottom, Christians not linked to any church, who've been disappointed by other Christians. And so the church of Jesus Christ on earth is a mixture of wheat and tares, of those who really know the Lord and those who don't, but are probably in a legalistic way of trying to do something to please God to one day get into heaven. The, the invisible church are those who have repented and believed and trusted in Jesus, and Jesus indwells them. But not everybody who calls themselves a Christian is like that. So that gives you some kind of idea of the two kinds of ways of looking at the church in its global aspect. But we are also part of the church locally. So I've tried to put our church uh, our church fellowship within the confines of the UK. Here you can see the UK church, and then you can see Wisbeach. You can see the UK. What? We're a big part of the UK. <laughs> 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 <Very much. laughs> yes, just to try and make it understand. Anyway, Not but there you can see we are in Wisbeach, but there are other churches here. We don't. Um, we don't do everything quite the same, there are differences. Uh, and then within each church, there will be a mix probably of those who really know the Lord, but who are wanting to know how to find the Lord, or maybe just nominal. I don't know. But then we've got churches together, and there we're, there we're linked together. You'll see one or two uh, leaflets there on the table that speak about that. But then we as the King's Church are also part of a, uh, of a network of churches called Churches in Community which is largely in the south of England and a lot centred around London, but we're linked with them in a fellowship way. We're also part of the Evangelical Alliance. So that gives you a little bit of a background of where we are in the whole church globally in the UK. But now just to take you briefly 
to um, <laughs> oh, wait, oh, sorry, yes. no, no. and this represents the old way we looked at membership and there you can see three concentric circles that means they've all got the same center but there you can see in the heart of our uh, our fellowship is our leadership and we believe God has placed them there to be over us and to help us to walk more closely with the Lord Jesus. They are accountable to God and to us and we to them. But then we've had, uh, up until really earlier, well, last year, membership, which usually meant that somebody who wanted to become a member would speak to Clive or one of the elders, say, I'd like to belong. And they'd get listed. And if they weren't baptized as a believer, then it would be a challenge to them that they actually get baptized as a believer. They might have been sprinkled as a baby, and we are not so keen on that particular way of doing things. But anyway, this is the way, and this was the way into membership. But then we had a whole lot of other people who came in and out and were part of the congregation. They were, in a sense, part of us, but always a little bit on the fringe. And we began to feel this is perhaps not the best way ahead. So we then moved to another model, which is the Ragged Church model. And basically all this, I'm just giving a brief overview, all this is in a leaflet that you'll see on the table there. There are a few copies there, and if you'd like to take one and see all the details, which I cannot give now, you'll find it there. But there are many um, aspects in which this Ragged Church concept is really going to help us. Firstly, in, in earlier years, a generation or so ago, people would believe in Jesus and then start to look for a place to belong to. But in our broken society today, um, people have a need, a sense of belonging to something that is good. And then they began to realize, oh, there's a faith. You see, Sunday school used to be something that many of our children used to go through. We have many of uh, those of us who are older did that. But today, a tiny proportion of children in this country go to a Sunday school. And therefore, they have no background knowledge at all. They've got to pick up so much new information before they can really understand what it is to believe. And so belonging before you believe is a better way to approach our society today. There are many other good reasons why this will really help. Because, of course, somebody can say they become a member, but then things change over time. The amount of involvement decreases or increases. And really, we decided the best thing to do is not for the leadership to decide who wants to be a member, but you, before God, have to decide, do I want to belong or not? So the emphasis is on you. But then, in, in our church, there will therefore be another inner call of people who really are committed and get deeply involved, and then they would do some of the things that we would have expected in the past of a membership. If somebody wanted to be involved in the inner core and involved in leadership roles, they would need to get baptized. They'd need to agree with the basic statement of faith of the church, and so on. But we believe this is going to help us in the future to be more effective for God and make it easier for people to actually become part of us. Because so many, so many people are afraid to come to a church. What should I do? You know. But I believe this kind of way will make it easier. So that's all I will say now. There's a lot more written in that leaflet, and I hope you'll find that helpful. At the end, there's a challenge. Do you want to join us to seek a closer walk with Jesus? Do you want to walk with us as a disciple of Jesus? Do you want to serve with us? This is all part of the implication of being a member with us.